Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to make our website responsive inside different devices. So if I were to take this website we have right here and view it inside a cell phone or tablet, right now our website would look exactly like it does inside a browser, inside a computer. And in some cases that would be okay, but in a lot of cases, such as this one we have right here, where we have a small menu up in the corner, we have, you know, tiny text going on, we have a little image down here. If I were to see this inside a cell phone, it would not be very, you know, user friendly because it's very tiny. So in a lot of cases, we want to make our design respond to the device that we're viewing it on. And that is not very difficult to do. Uh, we can actually do that only using CSS. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to talk about how to make our website that we have right here responsive. Now, I should also mention that today, well, if we were to take five years ago, uh, the amount of people who are viewing websites inside their cell phones and tablets were not as high as today, but it has rapidly been increasing. So today, you can't really have a website that's not responsive to cell phones and tablets because there's just so many people viewing websites on the devices. So it's, it's actually getting pretty important to have a responsive website, which is why this episode might be really important for some of you guys. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and open up my code and inside my style sheet we can actually go straight down to the bottom of our style sheet i usually like to style our media queries oh, well you guys don't know what media queries is yet um but i like to style the responsive design at the bottom of my style sheet so at the very bottom here underneath the footer i'm just going to go ahead and move down a little bit so i have some separation from the rest now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and specify exactly how wide our screen needs to be in order for it to start changing the design. Meaning that if I were to take my browser here and let me just go ahead and minimize the window a little bit. Like so, and if I were to actually minimize the screen sideways, how far do I want it to go before it starts saying, okay, now we're on a tablet or now we're on a cell phone and now it needs to change the styling of our website. Because if I were to have it this small, as you guys can see, it actually starts to cut off and we don't want that inside a device. So inside our style sheet down here at the bottom, the first thing we're going to do is, well, at least a rule of thumb for me is that you should always style for the smallest device first, meaning that we're going to start out with a cell phone. So what we're going to do here in order to specify that, okay, every single piece of code that goes right here is for when the screen reaches a certain size. And we do that by adding at, whoops, I did actually just tap away from my code here. I do that by writing at media space. And then we need to specify the width of our screen as we are, you know, viewing it on a different device. So we're going to add parentheses. And in here, we can either write max width or minimum width. So right now, if I were to say max width, max dash width, and say colon, and then set it to, let's say 768, which is one of the presets you can find on the internet that says, okay, now we're styling for a cell phone. So after you've done this in the parentheses, afterwards, we just simply open up the code like we've done before. And you guys will see it does actually turn into a um, accepted color inside my uh, code editor. So everything that goes in here will happen once we reach this width of our window. So what we can do here is, for example, if we were to go back to the website and say, okay, once I reach a certain size, when I minimize my window, I would like my intro text down here to change in size because right now it's very tiny and I would like to have it readable. So if I go back up to where we have the styling for that part, we can actually go ahead and just find it. It's right here. Index intro P and in index intro H2. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the styling for those go down to the bottom here where we have our media query. Then I'm going to paste it in here like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and move it out a little bit because I would like to show exactly where my curly bracket starts from the media query and where it ends and then where all the styling in here goes. Now, I just copied the entire styling for the H2 and the paragraph. You don't need to, uh, to copy everything down. You only need to copy down what you want to change meaning that if I only want to change the font size, I actually don't need any of these other codes here. So right now we don't want the text transform because it will automatically be. It's only going to overwrite. It's not going to completely change the styling. 
once we actually minimize the screen. I need to need to make that clear. So the padding bottom, we can just keep the same. Uh, the text align center, we want to keep the same. The font family, we want to keep the same. And let's just keep the font weight for now. So once we minimize our browser, I would like for my font size to become 34 instead. I would like my paragraph down here to also as well, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything except the font size and the font weight. I would like my font size to become 26. If I save this now, and then we go back to our browser, I refresh my page, and I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize the browser. As you guys can see, I do actually have it quite tiny now. If I were to have it this big, like this is not 768 pixels yet. If I were to slowly minimize, notice that the text down here will actually increase in size once we do actually hit that certain point where it gets bigger. So if I minimize, 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 and there we go. So as you guys can see, it does actually pop bigger once we do hit that certain size, which is how you, you know, style for a device. Now, going back to our code, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the different types of media uh, codes we have here, because you can do quite a lot with these. So right now we specified the max width. We can also uh, specify the minimum width. If I were to say this, we will actually notice that everything gets flipped around. So right now it's tiny. And if it gets above 768, it does actually change into this we have down here. Let's just go ahead and reverse that again. Now we can also specify something else in here after the media. And this one is not, well, it it's, might not be as important for you guys right now, but um, after the media, we can also specify um, if you want this to be viewed on a device that has support for something called screen mode. And the way we do that is by adding screen afterwards here. And this is just, if you go to w3schools.org, which is the website I usually like to use when I have to look up references. Um, they actually uh, recommend that you use screen when you want to make it for devices because apparently devices just kind of support this thing. Um, th another thing we can add in here is something called only, which we are gonna add right before the screen. And this is something that is done to hide the styling. You know, once we do actually change the styling, we need to actually hide the old styling from older browsers or what you call older user agents. Um, because the newer browsers does actually support this automatically, but some older browsers might not support this, you know, that we're doing here. So we need to specify these two. At least I think it's a good idea that we keep these two in here. And then we just continue on from here on out. So I also want to mention that if we do want to have something in between a certain width and, you know, like a minimum width and a max width, we can also specify both of these parameters by saying, okay, I would like to have media screen, uh, well, media only screen, and I would also like to have a minimum width. So I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, min in here, dash width, and set it to something specific like Let's actually go ahead and take our, let's, let's take the 768 in here just for now and copy it in here. And then I would like to say afterwards here, and I would like a max width to be 1768 as an example. If I were to view this now, it would actually only be in between these, meaning that if I go and refresh my browser, you guys will notice that right now, if I were to size it up a little bit, you can actually see if I have it below here, below 768, it will actually be the regular styling. If I were to hit above 768, poop, we do actually get a larger font size. But if I continue to the point where I reach a, a 1768 pixel width, you guys will notice that it will change back to normal like it did right there. Now you guys might be asking, well, how can your window be larger than once, uh, 1768, that's because I'm actually on a really big resolution monitor here. So in case of you guys, you might want to, you know, change this down a little bit to maybe 900 or something. Um, now, so this is how we essentially do this. Let's just go ahead and reverse back a little bit and just keep it at max width and then this thing, because I think this is good for now. This is just for cell phone devices and that kind of thing. Um, so now that we talked about this specifically, I would like to talk about something called portrait and landscape mode as well, 
which is something that's also going to be really important for you. So let's say I have this certain styling here and I would like to also specify that if the user were to take their cell phone or the tablet and instead of viewing it with the, you know, the, the long width of the screen going upwards, if they flip the tablet or if they flip the device into landscape mode, I would like for it to change the styling to something else. So right now, if I were to take my cell phone and say, okay, if you're viewing your cell phone like you would normally, I would like to add and parentheses, and then I'm going to set an orientation like so. I'm going to set colon and then I'm going to say portrait. So right now, if I were to view this in portrait mode, it would actually have a certain type of styling. So let's actually go ahead and test this out. So if I were to take this styling here and say this is for uh, portrait mode only, then I'm going to go ahead and copy all my code, paste it below. And let's go ahead and make one for landscape mode instead. So if I were to change portrait to landscape on the bottom one we have here, and then I would like to say, well, I would like my uh, H2 to also change font color into red. I can actually go ahead and save, refresh my browser. And then if we were to go ahead and just kind of minimize it below, uh, so we do get some changing to the text. Let's see if the font size does actually get bigger. It does not for some reason. Let's go ahead and figure out why it does not do that. Okay, so I just found out why I couldn't see anything inside my browser. And I did actually forget to add an and, I believe, inside my code. So make sure after the screen you do have an and, and then max width, and, orientation, portrait, and the same thing down here when the uh, with the landscape code. So once we have this, we can actually continue. I did actually spend quite a lot of time figuring out that I was missing this. Uh, so let's just go ahead and dive back into the website here. Now, if we go ahead and resize our uh, window sideways and we have it, uh, you know, like our uh, view is actually taller than it is wide, you guys will notice that our text gets bigger, but it doesn't turn red. In the landscape styling, I did actually tell it that it needed to turn red once it was in landscape. So if I were to resize this out again and then resize the height instead and just make sure we, got, we can actually see what's going on here, like so. Now it's in landscape mode because it's actually wider than it is tall. So if I were to resize from the width till we actually hit that certain width that we want, which is right there, you guys will notice that we do still have a larger uh, width than height. And we did get below the 768 pixels that we chose inside our styling. So right now it did actually turn red. So that's how essentially we, uh, you can style different kinds of responsive designs. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is an issue that some people run into later on when they do their coding. And it's kind of a workaround to fix an issue that you probably should have thought of before you started making the website. Now, if you want to, or at least if you're planning on making a responsive design at some point when you're done making the website, you need to consider from the beginning how the layout is going to be because you need to be able to take the website and just move around the styling a bit. For example, if I have a new section down here and I want to move all of them down below each other, once we do actually get to cell phone size, because right now, if I were to view them on a cell phone and everything is sideways, it's going to get very tiny. So maybe I want these to be below each other instead, once I hit the device and we need to make sure we actually set up the HTML in a way that allows for us to just through styling, make these appear underneath each other. And right now we have them floating and we do have the same width, uh, like the same margin each on each side. I'm kind of stuttering here on each side of the posts. So we would actually be able to do this from this kind of layout we made here. But let's say I did actually not think about making a response from the beginning. And now I'm sitting here with the issue that I can't really change this. Now, the way to fix that would be, or at least the way I've found to fix that kind of issue is if I were to go back into my HTML sheet and take, for example, our, let's go ahead and take our form down here in the bottom and say, okay, this form is not very good to make responsive. I need to change the layout for the HTML, but I don't want to change the layout on the browser version on the computer because it does actually look quite nice. But once I go to the device, I need to be able to move this around so that it actually looks nice on the device as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and copy my entire uh, form. 
Then I'm going to paste it below here. And then the class of this form is going to be form dash box dash device. Because now we have two forms going next to each other. We're going to have one that's actually been styled inside our browser here. And we're going to have one below, which hasn't really been styled, as you guys can see. And that's because right now we added all this styling to our first form, which was inside this class called form dash box. And now because we have the second form, we can actually go into our style sheet and say inside the regular code, not inside the media code, but inside the regular code at the bottom here, we can just kind of go ahead and say we have a class called form dash box dash media. And this styling, or at least this uh, div box, if I open up the code here, you would like to display as none. Again, this is, a, I don't recommend doing it this way. You should have everything prepared for responsiveness from the beginning. But if you do actually at this point, you can do this. Okay. Because I know some people will tell me out there that this is, you know, you shouldn't write unnecessary code. And it's just kind of a, a, a thing about, you know, browsers loading a little bit faster and that kind of thing. But if you run into this issue, this is how to fix it. So right now, if I say display none for this form and I go refresh my browser, you'll actually notice that our bottom form is still there for some reason. Let's actually find out why. Let's go back into form dash box. Did I spell something wrong? Form dash box dash device. Ah, okay, it's not dash media, it's actually dash device. Save it, refresh the browser, and you'll notice that our bottom form disappears. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and take this styling, copy it, go into our uh, media styling down here with the portrait, paste it in here. And instead of saying display none, we're going to say display block. So now, actually, let's go ahead and do one more thing. Let's actually take the form dash box styling, not the device, but the box itself, and tell it to display none once we hit this. So right now, what we're doing is that once we do actually hit a maximum width of 768, it's going to hide the first form down here, and it's going to show the second form, which is meant for devices. So if I were to refresh the browser and just kind of go into device mode here, you guys will notice that right now we do see the form we just pasted in that has no styling. If I go ahead and refresh a little, or like resize it, whoop, suddenly we get the, the old form popping up. So if I go down again, you can see that it does actually pop in and out between these two. And the reason you can do this and it will actually work is that you can actually go into the second one we made, like the actual form inside the HTML, and just kind of move around everything in here. So if you don't want to add breaks, let's say the breaks are the thing that destroys it from being you know, a good responsive design. You can actually just go into it and remove these breaks, like so, like so, like so. And I know this is not going to look very pretty once we do actually refresh our browser, but they actually notice that we have two forms that does the same thing, but they have different styling. And because we changed the HTML, we can also do different styling to them and make them behave differently. Okay. So we have two completely different forms that looks the same. So this is the lazy workaround to fix an issue that you should have fixed from the beginning. I, I can't say that enough. You have have to keep in mind if you want to make it responsive. Um, but this is how we're going to make everything responsive inside our browser. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys next time.